Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled father tries to give a firearm to a child. Our next Reddit post is from Star Covered Galaxy. Me and my mom are visiting family for the summer, so we had to fly. Karen and her son were seated behind me and my mom on the plane. Now, I love musicals. The one that I'm currently obsessed with is the Sweeney Todd movie adaptation because I finally got around to watching it and I freaking love it. So, of course, I downloaded the movie for the flight. I was watching the movie, headphones on, enjoying myself. I had no idea that the Karen's entitled little crotch goblin was watching also through the gap in the seats. When Sweeney makes his first kill, there's a lot of blood in that scene. Then I hear this tiny little scream from the crotch goblin. Karen, of course, tends to her precious angel and demands that I turn off my movie because it scared my little baby. Yes, she actually made the word baby longer. I told her, no, I wasn't going to do that. And why was her kid even snooping on my movie in the first place? It's her job to make sure her kid is occupied enough that he doesn't bother other people. I wasn't disturbing anyone, and I was minding my own business, so I wasn't going to change my movie on my phone to satisfy her bratty kid. Meanwhile, her kid was yelling, Make her change it, mommy! over and over again. Neither of them were wearing their mask correctly either, so that was annoying. The Karen, being a Karen, immediately calls a flight attendant and tells her that I refuse to stop watching my ungodly gory horror movie and that I was showing it to her kid. I rolled my eyes and the flight attendant asked me what happened. I told her I was just watching my movie when all of a sudden I noticed this kid was snooping at my phone from between the seats. The flight attendant told the Karen that there was nothing she could do and she suggested that she give her kid an activity to do so he didn't see what he wasn't supposed to be seeing. Karen pouted and just gave her kid her phone. Down in the comments, we have this story from Narmada. Plain Karens are amazing. One basically had the audacity to ask me for my phone for their kid, who was watching me play a game on it from the seat behind. I'm not giving you my phone to play games on, WTF? Our next Reddit post is from Midnight Express. So this happened this past weekend, and I'm still kind of shaking my head at this one. I'm an amateur competitive shooter. I compete in several disciplines, but by far my favorite is cowboy action shooting. It's timed, high speed, and lots of fun. Everyone dresses up as cowboys and cowgirls, uses period weapons, and you pick your own cowboy name. That's right, we're just nerds with guns. The best part about this community is that almost everyone tries to give back in some way. The way I choose to give back is to dress up and donate my time telling folk tales at the local library, minus the firearms of course. Several of the other club members will attend heritage days, fairs, and the like. Last week, I get a call from our club president. He tells me that some of the members are going to be performing at a heritage festival a couple of counties over from me, and he asks me if I'd pitch in and help. I tell him that I'd love to, and I ask him for the details. He gives me all the information and asks me to do him a favor. He wants me to bring the big gun. I laugh and tell him I'd be happy to. The big gun that he mentioned is my all-time favorite firearm. It's an 1874 Sharps Quigley, so named because it was used in the Tom Selleck movie Quigley Down Under. I won't go into the technical specifications, but she's a pig. She's roughly 4 feet long and weighs somewhere around 13 pounds. She's even made by the same company that made the rifles for the movie. She's too big, too heavy, too expensive, and I love her. Her name is Cora. If you saw the movie, you'll get it. So I show up on Saturday, drag all my stuff to the booth, and basically stand around looking like a knockoff Tom Selleck. Now, there are some strict precautions taken when we do events like this. We have no live ammunition anywhere on the site. We even dig through our vehicles beforehand to make sure we didn't leave any there by mistake. All weapons are transported in securely locked, hard-sided cases, and whenever they're removed, they have trigger locks on them. The club members who perform will have blank rounds for fake gunfights, but those are kept in separate locked containers. So I'm standing at the booth and answering any questions that people might have. Yes, the gun is from a movie. Yes, it will shoot that far. No, I don't think I could do it. As this is going on, I see a boy, maybe 15 to 16 years old, studying my rifle pretty intently. I ask him if he has any questions, and he proceeds to rattle off all the specs of the rifle to me. I'm impressed, and I tell him that he really knows his stuff. He tells me that Quigley was his grandpa's favorite movie and that he used to watch it with him before he died. We talk about the movie and how awesome Alan Rickman is. Then he asked if he could hold the rifle. 
I tell him, I don't have a problem with that, as long as he gets his parents to come over and get their permission first. The kid runs off, and after a bit he returns with his father. I knew that I was in for a rough time when the first words out of his mouth were, WHY WON'T YOU LET MY SON TOUCH YOUR EFFING GUN?! I could tell that this was typical behavior by the way the kid turned bright red and stared at the ground. All the other club members had gone off for a performance, so I was alone at the booth with the kid and this idiot. I told the man, Sir, I have no problem with him holding the rifle. I just wanted him to get your permission first. He's a minor, and I don't think it's a good idea to hand him a firearm without your consent. The guy starts to yell at me, saying, I don't see what the big effing deal is. It's not effing loaded. I respond with, I take it he has permission? Of course he effing does. I tell the boy to go ahead. His face lights up as he hefts the rifle, grinning from ear to ear. He asks if I can take a picture, and I agree. I even took off my cartridge belt and let him wear it. It just had dummy rounds, only the bullet in the casing, no primer or powder. The kid thanks me and starts to walk off before his father stops him. Don't you want to play with any of these other guns? I inform the father that I don't own those weapons, but he's welcome to wait and ask the people who do. He starts yelling about how he doesn't need permission, how this is a free country, and that he can do what he wants. All his yelling gets the attention of the deputies who are patrolling the fairgrounds. A couple of them walk over and tell him that if he doesn't calm down, he'll be asked to leave. He quickly tells his son they're leaving, but before they walk away, I call out to him. I pull out one of the dummy rounds of my belt and ask, can he have this? He mumbled something about not caring, so I hand it to his son. I tell the boy what it is and that he can make a keychain or something out of it. I also hand him a club card with my email written on the back. I said, if you get permission from another guardian who's willing to bring you and sign some paperwork, let me know and you can come shoot a match with us. I'll even bring my gun Cora. I received an email from his mother this evening and they'll both be joining us for a match in a couple of weeks. So yeah, it is a free country and you can do what you want, but since when does that extend to being able to use other people's property without their permission? Wouldn't that mean that we could just walk into this entitled father's home and when the guy's like, what are you doing on my property? We can just say, oh, it's a free country and I can go where I want, old man. This guy's so obsessed with his freedom and his rights that he forgot about basic property rights. Our next Reddit post is from 42020 grad. My mom just upgraded her wedding ring because my engagement ring was too nice. According to my fiancé, my mom told her husband that she wanted to upgrade her wedding ring the moment that she saw the ring that my fiancé picked out. My mom literally said, it's time for an upgrade. It's been a few weeks and they went to get a quote on her old ring to trade it in. I told her I was fine with it as long as it didn't look too much like mine and they both said that it wouldn't because she liked a different cut. Well, my mom came back from the jewelry store with a similar shaped stone and a huge thick band made of smaller diamonds. They sent us all a photo of it, and it's nuts how much money they spent on it. When I asked her why on earth she needed such a large ring, she told me that I didn't deserve to have a larger ring than hers. Because I'm not even married yet, so they agreed to get a bigger one because she earned it. First of all, I think it's insane to equate your self-worth to a ring. And secondly, they said that they'd been having money problems and the amount that they spent seems irresponsible. I just wanted to vent a little and see if anyone else has had something similar happen. Well gosh, OP, I wonder how a couple like this ended up having money problems. Our next Reddit post is from Crazy Cake. My husband's entitled mother is absolutely notorious for doing things in this order. 1. Constantly criticize and guilt trip us about not visiting enough. 2. Ask us to appear at her house on a certain day. 3. We call and text on the appointed day before leaving our house to confirm our arrangements and she says yes. 4. We drive for one hour to get to her house. 5. We arrive and she's not there. Yes, we're there at the appointed time. 6. We're expected to just wait for her to come back home. Sometimes we wait 4-5 to five hours. Sometimes she never comes back at all. 7. During this interlude in passive-aggressive hell, sometimes she responds to us on her cell phone. Often she doesn't, and my husband wastes half of his day off in her empty house. 8. Sometimes she eventually comes back. Sometimes she doesn't. After experiencing this a few times with my husband, I now give her 20 minutes, then we leave. 
9. Several hours later when she finally arrives home and doesn't see us patiently waiting, she starts texting angrily about, Why weren't you there? And why didn't you call me? We were there. We did call her. 10. She sends more passive-aggressive texts for the next 4 to 10 days, absolutely infuriated that we didn't spend all day waiting for her. There's a variation of this pattern where she says she's coming to my house. It's usually her idea because, duh, I know that she's about as reliable as a dead cat. In that version, we completely clear up my day and my husband's day off for her. We miss out on other things that we'd rather be doing. We cook food to feed her dinner, and we clean the house in stress all day instead of relaxing. And then she either doesn't show up at all, cancels just before she was supposed to arrive, or she sends a long string of texts and calls about how her life is so hard and she's busy doing other things and she guesses she's not coming. She does this on my son's birthdays and my husband's birthdays. She does this on all holidays. She does it on summer weekends where we all could have been doing something else. Okay, so I guess that I am partly to blame for what happened on July 4th. After all, I do know what she's like. But in all the busyness of the 4th of July weekend, fireworks, a barbecue, two separate birthday parties, I forgot to have a backup plan in case grandma bailed on our plans. I guess I'm the fool. To fit my mother-in-law into our crammed weekend, we cut out some much needed quiet family time at our house before we went to the fireworks at 10. We had been planning this with her all week. My husband texted his mom before we left to drive to her house and she said she'd be there. We arrive, and guess what? She wasn't there! We decide to just go out on our boat instead. It was over 90 degrees, it's 6pm, and we've got over 4 hours to kill before fireworks. We can't just wait around in the heat, and I'm not going to wait around all day in her house with my son who's being blown off by grandma yet again. Especially when we didn't get to celebrate 4th of July last year because of COVID. We don't have enough gas or money to drive home, sleep until fireworks time, and then drive back. So I took my son swimming. I had to buy swimsuits for both of us to swim in because we had on nice new clothes for grandma's dinner that she was supposedly having us over for. Thank god Walmart is cheap. It was just too hot to not swim. So we're splashing around and actually having a great time and about three hours later the frantic text messages and calls begin. She's furious because, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you answer my texts? Are you coming over to eat or not? I made my husband turn his phone off, and we ate McDonald's for dinner and went to a completely different spot to watch fireworks than we usually do. It was on the river, and the sunset over the water was absolutely beautiful, and we had tons of fun giving each other silly internet quizzes. It was great memories for my son, and that's what really matters. Not his super selfish grandma. OP, I'm glad to hear that you're finally starting to learn your lesson. Yeah, it sucks that she does this, but you can't keep falling for the same tricks. If your mother-in-law isn't going to be reliable, then you have to stop planning your life around her. Our next Reddit post is from Elkwaffle. I used to do babysitting as a teenager for extra cash. Most of my regulars were lovely, but you still get the odd client. I was a very popular babysitter in the area, and I would happily work with very short notice. So I would regularly get calls from parents who had been given my number needing a babysitter within a few hours. This meant that when I got a call from a new parent needing a babysitter that evening, it wasn't that surprising and I happily accepted. This referral came from one of my favorite regulars, so I had no initial concerns. The first red flag was they had a huge Rhodesian Ridgeback dog, which was rather protective of their house. But I'm pretty good with dogs, so we got on well after a small introduction. Unexpected, but fine. It's about 5 p.m. at this point, so I ask all the typical questions. Does your 9-year-old son need dinner, bedtime, etc.? Essentially, their answer was that they'll be back around 2 a.m., there are zero rules, and the kid will pick something from the covers and just let him have whatever he wants. There was no bedtime and no rules on what show he should watch. This 9-year-old kid wanted to watch South Park, which is why I checked this rule repeatedly, but apparently it was all good for him to binge watch whatever he wanted that evening. I had a relatively uneventful evening. The kid was surprisingly well behaved considering they had no boundaries. That is, until the parents got home. The parents get back around 2 a.m., nine hours after they left. Then the wife went upstairs and came back with a baby. I had not been informed there was a baby upstairs the entire time I'd been there. They had just shut the baby in the bedroom and didn't think to tell me about it because they thought it wouldn't need anything, so no big deal. What the hell? 
Even if the baby didn't need anything, then if there was an emergency, I wouldn't have known to get the baby out of the house. It turns out they didn't want to tell me because they were concerned that I'd charge extra for two kids. Note, I didn't charge extra. It was a flat rate up to three kids. I just took their money and left. When I got home, I told my mom about it who worked for the school their kids went to. Not long after, they left the country with no warning. This isn't even the only time a parent has surprise dumped their baby on me. Apparently, I just look like I'll be cool with it. Can you imagine, like, these parents drive home and their house is just up in flames and the babysitter is outside with the nine-year-old and she's like, don't worry, I'm really sorry about the house burning down, but the good thing is that I got your kid out of the house, so he's completely safe. And the entitled parents are like, but what about the baby? And the babysitter says, baby? I don't know anything about a baby. But hey, at least you saved some money by only paying the one child rate, right? I mean, maybe the nine-year-old would speak up and say there's a baby upstairs, but would you want to leave the fate of your baby in the hands of a nine-year-old? Because I sure wouldn't. That was our slash entitled parents, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.